OK, we're going live. Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to um, <coughs> the Democrat service meeting. Uh, the first item is apologies for absent. No apologies, Chair. Right. Decorations of interest. As and when. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Public open forum. With a queue enough to get in. <laughs> right, number four is feedback from the working group, which the, the information you've had sent to you. So what I'll ask is, is there any questions on what you've been given so far? When was I sent out, when was I sent out Nick? I don't think I have had it. Um, the info, there's notes attached to the agenda from the working group, the working group notes. I'll look now. I don't think I just oh, had that, that would I? Yes, yes, I got it now. Yeah. yeah. No, you yes, wouldn't have had it, Maureen. No. Hmm? You wouldn't have had it, no. No. Yeah, there's something on the agenda further on down, um, down the agenda item four. Yeah. Right. Nicola, Nicola's coming in on this one. Thanks, Chair. Just to say that the notes from the subgroup are attached to the um, agenda. Um, there's not too much to say on it at the moment because the action from the subgroup was that um, councillors attend the cluster meetings with um, Kath Fallon and Sharon Lloyd. For those who were there, they had quite a discussion about that. Um, so I think the next steps are to follow up from that after councillors have been to those cluster meetings. And we can bring that back to a future meeting then. We need to obviously arrange another subgroup after that has happened. Anybody want to come in? Just one thing, Chair. When when do we expect the cluster meetings to start back? Or have they been taking place? I'm just going to ask Nicola, because we asked for these cluster meetings to be uh, sorted ASP. Yeah, all right. Yeah, Kath did say, didn't she, at yeah. the subgroup, she said she was going to arrange them and let people know when they were. But we can chase that up and find that out. If you can, please. And let, can you let the committee know? Because we don't want to just be sitting on it. Yeah. And then it goes stale. <laughs> right, prayers at meetings. Chair, there are two um, hands up in the in the chat. Oh, bar. sorry, mine. Oh, yeah. Go on. Oh, sorry, Matt, Matt, right, Matt. Matt. Thanks, Chair. Hello, everyone. Uh, Matt Phillips, so Chief Officer for um, for People and Governance, and the Monitoring Officer. Um, I just just wanted to add on on that item, Chair. That um, SLT have recently had a discussion with a um, a group called uh, New Local, who are a um, lo local authority based uh, membership groups spread across England and Wales. Um, they're 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 quite an exciting um, organisation actually, and they're very much focused on elements such as community power, community engagement. So they're doing a lot of work in and around this space that the working group's been considering, um, you know, like the citizens assemblies and just how to how to best engage with members of the public so that they're involved in decision making. So um, I wanted to ask Chair, in and amongst the, the actions that have been taken already with Kath and her team, um, hopefully getting um, members from the from this committee involved in some of the, the work that they're doing, the clusters that you mentioned, the Business Resilience Forum, etc. I'd like to get the new local team in to present probably initially to yourselves. If we can do it for the 6th of September meeting, then that would be ideal. Um, if it's one of the working groups that sits outside the meeting, then then I suggest we do that. And then with a view to you seeing them before we try and arrange a, a wider member seminar, if Democratic Services Committee are interested with that, just just to see what it is that's happening in other in other locations. And it, it will help to inform that the ongoing discussion. Oh, thank you for that, man. Any members got any questions? Giles, Giles you want to come in? 
Yeah, thank you, Chair. It was only a very quick point and apologies for not being able to make the working group because I have been keen. I uh, just wondered whether or not uh, members had considered looking at other authorities that operate similar um, area committees. I, I know, for example, I'm pretty sure that Newport do a, a neighbourhood committee and it would just maybe interesting to see how they work or if they find they have the same problems or if not, what they do differently to us. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any other member got anything to say? No. So you're you're all happy for uh, the monitor officer to arrange this meeting with this outside body uh, yeah. and invite and invite this committee to it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Carry on, Mac. Right. The next thing is number five: prayers of meetings. Anybody want to say anything on that? Yeah. Um, um, prayers at meetings have been added to the agenda. It was requested by um, Councillor Woodhouse. So maybe she'd like to um, let us know more detail about it. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Nicola. Yeah, um, as we adopted a, a different way of working due to the pandemic, it seemed um, sensible to, uh, and the fact that we were going through such a crisis and we were losing family members, friends, colleagues, and um, and members themselves. We, we lost a tre tremendous number of people during that, um, well, I'd say about 12 months from when we started to do things remotely. Um, so when it was sort of suggested that we shouldn't be carrying on having prayers in the, in, Full council meetings, and so it was reverted to being um, prayers were going to be before the meeting started. It just seemed with a new way of working and the fact that we were observing periods of silence in memory of, of as I said, all the people who had sadly passed away, that uh, the, the, the two things go together. And it was only when it was sort of queried uh, that it, it reverted to how it was done previously. I just think now. It would be an opportunity and I know colleagues agree for us to have a look at this now and see if we can bring this back to some sort of a, you know, a, a way in which we can the two if we hopefully we won't have any more, you know, more sort of um, periods of silence. But the fact that they be, the prayers were brought into the council meeting remotely, um, it, it, you know, just feel it would be appropriate to continue to do so. And I know other members feel the same. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any any other member uh, got any to say on this item? Uh, Matt. Thank you, Chair. Uh, and to very much echo what Sheila's just said. Actually, um, I'm very keen to keep them within the meeting if we can. Um, I think that it needs to be a full council decision if any changes are sort of made on on a long term basis. Um, so yeah, so I, I'd like us to uh, to take it forward as Sheila suggested. Right. Thank you, Matt. Tony. Tony. Sorry, everything off. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm not agnostic over this matter of, uh, of prayers, uh, but some members feel that they don't want to take prayers. Would it not be wiser to have a link before the meeting for prayers specifically so that we know exactly what what is what i say i'm not agnostic if people want having prayers but some members do not want prayers so we've got to accommodate both does that make sense yes it does make sense right martin um thank you chair uh, at the last county council meeting um the new leader of the council brought in a motion that in essence was about uh, equality of opportunity, uh, bringing in equality between uh, the sexes. Uh, and as a council, we've talked a lot uh, about to become more inclusive. Uh, and I think that uh, in the light of that, uh, Christian prayers uh, are, would have a very negative impact on that. Um, I think that we are in a position where those who wish to pray could do so in a, a meeting before the County Council, 
in, in just the same way as we did when we met live so that the the chair of the council and the chaplain could uh, lead prayers if they wanted them and members that wanted to participate could while those who don't uh, could not take part. There's, there, there is a legal precedent set back in 2012 that actually said that religion should not form part of council meetings. Um, I forget it was it, it was a town council in 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 Devon. I'm thinking Barnstable, but it it wasn't Barnstable. It was very close to that. Um, and and the, the it became taken to court, and the court ruled that religion could not be a part of a council meeting. Now I, I know there was an attempt by a conservative backbencher, Jake Berry, in 2015 to introduce a private members bill, uh, which he, he called the Local Government Religious Etc. Observances Bill. Um, I'm not sure if that got through all its stages because the last reading it had in the Commons, there were only a handful of members there um, and, and only one Tory spoke against it. And, and I'd actually like to uh, break the habit of a lifetime and quote a conservative politician in a favourable way. Uh, this was uh, what James Arbothnot, uh, Tory MP, said. If local authorities want to hold a moment of reflection at the beginning of a meeting, they can do so. If councillors wish to meet for prayers before a meeting, they can do so. And no change in the law is required to achieve that. So it is the principle of the bill that is of concern to me. And, and he went on to say that um, a, a new law like that would be out of touch with the majority of the people we represent because we are a community of many faiths and none. Uh, and for one group to impose on others their views would be anti-democratic. Uh, and would uh, would alienate councils from other type or other parts of society who indeed are those parts of society that at the last county council meeting we talked about trying to encourage to become part of our democratic process. So I think rather than having Christian prayers in a community when um, the latest evidence suggests that the biggest practicing religious group in the UK and now Muslims uh, is actually imposing people's views on other people uh, and that we should not be encouraging that. Far from it, we should be encouraging anybody who wants to practice their religion to do so, but as a formal part of our council business, we should be encouraging all faiths and none to play an equal part so I would be very opposed to religion forming a part of our meetings. And indeed, perhaps Matt can, can help me out here. Unless that private members bill did get through, um, the law suggests in that 2012 ruling that religion cannot be part of a council meeting. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Madam. Uh, Peter. You're on mute, Peter. Yeah, I'm off now, Chairman. Thank you. Yeah, following on, I, I understand where Martin's coming from, but as a council, um, we've always had prayers at the beginning of the meeting. We changed slightly some years ago when we had it five minutes prior, and those who did not wish to take play part didn't come in and then joined us at the two o'clock hour. So I, I'm all for remaining as we were, but I would welcome a gu guidance to come back to us, perhaps not just to this committee, but to the whole council from that, so we know exactly where we are uh, legally, so we don't go astray. But personally, I, in my 33 years in council, I've always welcomed the prayers at the beginning of the meeting. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Peter. Joe? Hi, um, so I am a practitioner of a different religion. I am a Buddhist and I attend regular interfaith 
sessions and so I have no problems by being present when Christian prayers are going on but I am not participating in that I am just standing and being respectful when other people are practicing their religion I personally find it preferable that the prayers would happen prior to the meeting started and also I know that there are other people within the council who are not as comfortable as I am of just standing still and allowing other people to do their express their um, personal faith. So I really do think that if we were to have prayers, I would really prefer it to be five minutes before the council meeting started. And if we're going to have moments of reflection and silence to remember people who are lost, this is something that everybody can participate in, no matter what religion they are. And to put it in prayers and only within prayers would strike me as being actually quite unkind to those of us who don't practice a Christian faith. So I would really like to keep those moments of silence separate. They are very much appropriate for within our council meeting. They are right that we should recognise people we have lost within our council meeting. And that's not part of prayers. It might be part of prayers for Christians, but it's not part of that. That Christian prayers isn't part of my personal expression of um, sympathy and reflection on what people have gone through during this terrible time. Um, and so I really would like us to retain the system as it was when I first joined council, which was that we have prayers five minutes before the meeting starts. You can either go into the chamber and participate or you can go into the chamber and just stand in respectful silence. And then we can begin and people who don't feel that they can do that, then they can join the meeting at two o'clock when we start properly. And at that point, if we do need moments of silence to remember people who we have lost, then that's perfectly acceptable to do within a council meeting. Thank you, Joe. David. Thank you, Chair. I um, would go along with what um, Councillor Woodhouse and Councillor Fikin said as previous and uh, current chairman um, and would be very happy to see prayers continue. I could also agree with uh, Councillor Watkins in that it might be a good idea for various reasons that have been expressed this afternoon to have the prayers prior to a meeting, but I think to commemorate people uh, is more likely to be a, um, not a job, but a function of the council that we remember people with respect and that should be part of the council meeting itself. Thank you. Thank you, David. Matt. Chair, I put my hand up because there have been a couple of references to me, but I'm conscious that Councillor Powell has her hand up as well. So do you want, do you want to get yeah. Councillor Powell's input first and then come back to me? Maureen? Yeah, thank you very much. It was the first time that I was chairman when this arose and uh, we changed to having the prayers five minutes before the meeting because by that way we could please everyone. Um, I think it's a sad day in a way because uh, you know, it, it, it solves the problem of people that have other religions, but they surely worship something in their way. And I wonder whether they can be doing that when we're doing our prayers. But I think the answer is to have them five minutes before and then it doesn't cause any problems for anybody. But after all, you can't keep religion out of council. What do we do with the sacra meetings? That's about religion connected to schools. How do, how do you run that if you keep religion out of school, out of council you can't keep it out but you can try to um, moderate it and I think possibly it has been um, the best way to have the prayers uh, two minutes before and then those that um, uh, don't want to can come in later. When I was at school which is a good many years ago I went to Hereford High School in the 1940s it's a long time ago uh, <laughs> 1949 when I went to my secondary school and those that didn't um, want to partake in prayers, just stayed out of assembly until prayers were over and walked in. And that was going on then. So I think that is the, the best way myself. So those of us who want to have the prayers, have them. And those who don't want to partake can join later. Thank you. Right, thank you, Maureen. I'll go back now to Matt. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, so so I've I've been in the organisation just side of three years now. So um, the uh, system uh, as the, the, that I've always seen, as Maureen was just making reference to, is that 
there is a, a period before a council meeting starts where prayers, be it within the chamber pre-COVID or um, remotely and online in this way, um, are, are conducted for those who wish to join. And then the meeting starts officially. So, so the, the question is one of whether prayers should feature as a formal and agendered part of the meeting. Um, and that's the uh, the legal question that was that was considered that the um, councillor Grocott uh, mentioned earlier, which I'll come back to now. Um, just just in terms of um, the form and function of this, I suppose the agenda is ultimately the responsibility of the proper officer, so that's the chief executive in this case. So ultimately, the contents of the agenda is is his responsibility. Um, however, it was mentioned earlier that if you did wish to um debate this um obviously the proper officer would be kind of duty bound to take notice of any debate and vote that, that took part in in council so i think if you did want the proper officer to consider um including prayers as an agenda item um, within council then a council debate beforehand would would be a sensible way of uh, informing that ultimate decision um, so, so to the law, um, yes, yeah, so Councillor Gorokot, not, not Barnstable, but Biddeford. It was Biddeford Town Council uh, in 2012 who were challenged by the, um, the Nas National Secular Society, I think it was, because they had uh, uh, incorporated within into their meetings as part of the agenda, a standing slot for, for prayers. And the uh, challenge was that this wasn't um, inclusive, ultimately. The way that councils up until that point in England and still in Wales at the moment for another few months had always worked is on the principle of uh, ultra vires, which is to say that if you don't have a piece of law that specifically allows you to do something as a council, then you are not allowed to do it. Um, so when the challenge was brought here, they were saying there's, there's nothing in law that says you are allowed to have a religious element or prayers uh, specifically as part of the as part of the agenda. The um, the town council relied on section 111 of the uh, local government 1972, um, which is a, a broad power that, that, that gets used actually in, in a number of different ways by various local authorities, but it's about um, it's designed to to allow a council to do something that will that will be um, conducive or of benefit to the discharge of their functions. So the argument put forward was section 111 um, through the incorporation of prayers within the agenda was beneficial to to the um, to the discharging of the council's functions. What the court held, this was the High Court, was not not quite um, what Councillor Grocott said, or, or or indeed what Councillor Powell was just saying about that there was no place for religion um, or that it should be kept out. They simply took the view that 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 law didn't confer any power on a council to make a decision to have prayers within their agenda. So it was agnostic to use that word on whether there was a place for religion in um, councils or not. But it simply said there is no law that you can rely on to have um, prayers as part of your standing uh, agenda. And that's the only piece of case law we have uh, re relating to, to prayers. So it's an absence of a legal power rather than a definitive statement saying it cannot happen. Um, but for that reason, I, I, as I understand it, prayers were no longer conducted. And I think it's probably in response to that that the change was made that, that Councillor Powell referred to just now with regards to Monmouthshire County Council. So what's, what's changed in the law since then, if you had the, the general power of competence came into England actually around the same time, um, and the general power of competence will come into power in Wales, I think it should be November this year as a result of the Local Government and Elections Act um, 2021, which came out about six months ago. Now, the, the, the idea of the general power of competence is it flips the, the idea of ultra, what is and isn't ultra vires so that actually a council can do anything unless there's a law that says that it can't. That's the theory that's been put forward, but no one has yet actually challenged it specific to the matter of prayers um, and a religious element to an agenda item. Um, so I don't have you any more legal information to give beyond in the single case where this was discussed, the High Court found that councils did not have um, a legal power to to include this within their agendas and and i think that's that's the that's been the case 
um, since then, there's been no no further um, court cases that that would override that. So I hope I hope that helps rather than confusing things too much. Um, and I suppose actually, if we get to a broader conversation around the legalities of it, ultimately you come down to a, a fairly long-standing discussion under the Human Rights Act, which is between um, the freedom of thought and belief um, and uh, freedom of expression and then how that plays out in the way that a lot of members have referred to today, i.e. the right to um, hold this as an element of, of an agenda, but then the right of others to say, well, actually, that impinges on my beliefs. And then how, how do you practically solve that? So that, that's where the broader discussion lies. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> Any other members want to come in on that? No, that information we just had? No? Giles? Very quickly, Chair, I was humming and hawing about whether to say anything because this is such an emotive issue. And if you're not <coughs> careful, it, we start thinking about all sorts of things about cultural identity of Britain and all those type of arguments. And I don't think we need to go that far. And I think Maureen's suggestion that, um, that we, 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 we still recognise the Christian faith that is part of our meeting, <coughs> but that we have it as, as, as like a separate block at the, the start seems to be the most sensible. And I, I'd like to think, and I suppose it, it's, it's difficult to, to argue contrary when you've got two vicars in your political group. Um, but I'd like to think if we had uh, Muslim members, and I'm thinking, for example, um, at, 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 this, at the Senate with Oscar and now his, his, his daughter in place, if they were on the county council, then I'd like to think that we'd be able to accommodate them um, and if they wanted to 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 pray, then we'd facilitate that for them as as, as well. And again, with with Joe, who's a Buddhist, I mean, personally speaking, I, I don't have a faith, um, but I don't mind um, taking part in the, the the prayers before the meeting. That doesn't I don't find that objectionable. But clearly, other members do. And Maureen referred to um, to to that a couple of of years back when we last discussed it. So I I I think it's. It's perhaps better to stick as 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 we are and have that that session before the meeting starts, and then, um, as, as David suggested, we we reflect on um, lost officers, members of the public, etc. Et um, the, the official start of the meeting. <coughs> totally interesting. Yeah, thank you once again, Chair. Well, I I came in at the beginning. I I suggested as a few members are suggesting in a similar sort of way that we have a link link or a little session before the council um we are able to put a link on teams for five to two aren't we for example and and carry it out that way in in until such time as we are purely defined on whether we can or can't am i am i right there should, should we put a link in do we make a recommendation um what what is the view of members you know we, we can't just leave it sitting here today without any real thoughts can we no. on the way forward you're, you're right um you, there is a link you can put in and you, you, if you want to go into prayer, you can go into that link. Once the prayer is over, you come out of that link and then come back into the, the council meeting. That's what ha that's what happens. Is that right, Nicola? Well, this, at the moment, we've been um, with council. Obviously, the meeting starts at two, but we've always been on the meeting. As you know, we join a little bit early anyway, just to make sure everything's OK. And prayers have taken place in that slot ahead of ahead of the live stream in then yeah but what we could do is you know leave it as it is and leave a five minute you know on the agenda we give notice that there's going to be pra uh, praise five minutes before the start of the meeting so we could leave it that way or we could put another link on at say 10 to 2 praise praise for council you know mm. it, we could do it that way or we could leave it as it as it is at the moment but oh. Down to members to decide. We could put a vote in there yeah. if you wanted to let us know what uh, what you'd like to vote on exactly, and then we could put a vote in the chat bar. Well, perhaps we ought to recommend this to council as well as rather than voting. Well, we'd make a vote, yes, but uh, yeah, we have to make a vote. Yeah, go on. Put a recommendation to council. Maybe leave as it is, or yeah. recommend discussion at council. We can. I think Maureen said this as well, didn't she, Maureen? And I think David. Yes, so we can put it. We can put a vote. Either leave it as it is, or 
we take this to council. Well, yes, got I'll, 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 I'll switch off a second, Chair. Right. right. <coughs> Sheila? Yeah. I'll, I'll give way to Matt because I was just going to suggest that something, but obviously Matt is current chairman, so I'll give way to Matt for a minute. Matt Seekin. Matt. Thanks. Matt. Uh, that's, uh, only Martin was ahead of me. I don't know if you want. Did you want to come in first, Martin, or do you want me to? Just... <laughs> don't fight. Don't no, you fight. carry on, Matt. No, 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 okay, then I'll, I'll come in. But it was, it was only very quick. You. It was only very quickly, just to say. Um, obviously, the law is changing in November in any event, um, and if we were to ask it to go to full council now for discussion, there's a chance that after November we might be doing that same bit of work again. Yeah. Um, so my only suggestion would be that if we are go, if we are minded to recommend this goes to full council for full discussion, it would be more appropriate after we've got powers of competence than ahead of that. That's yeah. all I was thinking. Yeah. Right there. Right. Sheila? Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I was going to suggest that we, we ask Matt's opinion. <laughs> it's been an interesting discussion and, and obviously I appreciate the fact that members have been very, uh, you know, straightforward on this one. It, it is something that's obviously very sensitive and um, as Matt is current chairman, I will follow his recommendation that we leave it for now and I'd be more than happy to go with that. But my own personal view is we did have, we did have, just for clarification, we did have the periods of silence and the prayers separately, that the one followed the other, and I just felt that was appropriate at the time. So if members are not um, happy for that to continue, then obviously it's been made, you know, made clear today that not everybody's comfortable with that. So I, I would just appreciate perhaps further discussion in due course, but we can leave it until um, after November. And as I say, as Matt is current chairman, I think you know it's appropriate to. To, to follow your recommendation, Matt. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, anybody else? Martin, uh, if, yes, uh, please, Chair. Yes. Uh, have, having spoken uh, against prayers in Council, if I could just clarify, um, I personally have uh, no religious belief. Uh, I did at one time, uh, but I don't any longer. Um, but uh, I do accept that people do have genuine faith uh, and, and they belong to many different types of religion. And, and I would be more than happy to have a separate session ahead of council for those who do wish to pray. I would have no objection to that at all. But I do uh, take the view that um, council itself should be inclusive and, and should be open to members of all faiths and none and that it is inappropriate to put one person's religion above another's inside the council business itself. But I would be more than happy and back anybody that wants to formally suggest it, that we have a separate link to any prayer organisation that wants to be contemplative before we actually begin the council meeting. Thanks. Right, thank you, Martin. Right. Anybody else wants to come in? Well, just to see that I did suggest the link earlier, Chair. It's up to you. Right, right. Sh should we take a vote then uh, that we had a link for prayers before council? Yes? Yeah, let's get, get the vote up. Right. Yeah, I'd be happy with that, Chair. Right. right. I'll ask Nicola now. Yeah, we'll get that. To, to put that in. Oh, 99. Mm -hmm. yeah. 12 responses. <laughs> Need the link as it is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think it's 6-6 six, six, um, with, with no extents, extent. Um, and it looks like, I'll be correcting Matt, if it's down to me. Yeah. 
Yes. I think I will go for the separate link. I listened to what's been said today, but I think it's only fair that we do it that way. So it's like it's been said, if people don't want to go into it, they, they don't have to. You up? Have you up, man? Yes. Chair, I just wonder if we can just caveat that with as long as it's technically feasible, because I'm just conscious the the work that goes into making sure that the remote setup is done so that we can simultaneously yeah. live stream. So if, if you if, if members aren't, I mean, bearing in mind that if it leaves, if we leave it as it is, people have the opportunity to do it all, already. So yes. that the link element is, is a kind of a technical differentiation. So if we can just make that caveat that it, as long as it's technically possible. Is that OK? Yes, fine. Thank you, Matt. You happy with that, Nick? Yeah. Right. Thank you for that. I'm being old one. Um, the next one is number six, response times to, meet, uh, to members on items or issues uh, which they come into offices and either no response or uh, a long time waiting for a response. Right. Right, Nicholas, yeah. Nicholas coming in on that one. OK, members, thanks, Chair. This um, item is following on from our previous meeting where we discussed this. Um, it was brought up as an issue. So a um, survey has been issued to all members and out of the 43, we've had 16 responses. And out of those responses, 11 people had issues and five people responded that they did not have any issues. Um, the ones that did respond, the 11, pretty much all focused on the same service area. So we are aware of it. Um, Matt Phillips has agreed that he's going to bring that forward with the senior officer through SLT and try and address that. Um, but I just want to say that the best way, if people are experiencing any issues with getting responses from officers, to direct that. I know John is happy for anybody to direct those issues straight to him and he will follow it up straight away or myself as well. Tony, do you want to come in? No, it must be a dead, uh, dead hand, sorry, Chair. Anybody want to come in on that? Giles? Giles? Well, no, Chair, I just put a comment in the, in the chat bar just to say it was disappointing that uh, the response was, was so small, really. Yeah. Um, but I, I suspect from talking to, to other members with, within our groups and, and generally, we, we know where the, the, the problem areas are and we just hope they're going to be addressed. Yes. Matt, do you want to come in and say anything on that? No, no thank you, Chair. No? Right. Just to follow up, Chair. Yeah. Um, I know John has also forwarded a contact sheet. Did all members get that? Yeah. Yeah, so that should be quite useful as well. So mm. hopefully that was, I know is something some of you have been keen on having for a while. So it, it yeah, it it, it matter of fact I was, I was reading it this morning. Uh, and there is a lot of yeah. information on, on the sheets where you can phone direct mm. to the people. If I was in the office, I'd have it printed out on my wall. Yes. It's very good. Yeah, but not at home. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, is there any other <coughs> questions or concerns about that issue? No. no? Right, number seven, dis <coughs> uh, discussions on job, job sharing for councillors. I think this is yours, Tony, isn't it? Yeah. <coughs> yes, Chair. I, <coughs> I, oh, I raised this with um, with John. He suggested we put it on this committee. Um, life, lifestyle, life and work and style and work balance and lifestyle are changing these days where people have part time jobs and people have um, home responsibilities. And there are thoughts I've read in the press in not just in, in, in Wales, but in other parts of Britain where um, 
the, the consideration that councillors and uh, councillors and of and of uh, MPs could be more of a job sharing uh, facility. I understand it would be difficult, but I'm not sure it's imponderable. Um, we do have, for example, um, an MP recently who job shared when she, when she was in in labour, in, not in labour, having a child, um, and um, I, I don't know how, she, how it was nominated the person that took her responsibility on, but I think it's something that we're not going to change overnight, but it's something I think that should be considered for, as I say, lifestyle balance in the future as to how um, councils can operate effectively with people who are able to carry out council duties, don't really have the full time to do it. I don't know whether any members have any feelings on this, but that's the, I'd like as a discussion topic to see what could be engendered to raise it further. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> do anybody else want to come in on that? No? <clears throat> Nobody's interested in that. Hang on, hang on. <clears throat> Matt? <clears throat> Matt? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, firstly, to thank Tony for the word imponderable. That's a fantastic word. Thank you. Um, but also, it's difficult to have a conversation uh, around this. So I, d I don't really understand the parameters of what we're discussing. Um, uh, so, yeah, so, so I, I, I'm unsure of, of how broad this conversation should be, really. And so I don't know if Tony wants to refine some of that or put some ideas forward on the table. Right, I'm checking the, I'm checking the stone in the pond, uh, Matt. See? Right, Martin. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I think Tony might have been referring to Stella Treacy, who um, managed to get a locum to cover her first pregnancy. Uh, and, and one of the government's chief uh, elected legal officers is currently taking maternity leave. Um, and Stella Treacy was making the point that the executive could, could have um, maternity leave, but ordinary <laughs> MPs couldn't. She just organised it herself. It's an interesting area and, and again it brings us back to equality of opportunity to represent uh, people as councillors uh, because um, it would seem unfair that male councillors um, will always be uh, available but female councillors might uh, have very young children give birth to, to babies and, and, and not be able to participate in the business of the council when they've been elected to do that. Knowing that the Welsh Government have introduced legislation that in future there will always have to be the option of remote working, I think that's some, an area we, we could start to look at and see how, how we could develop that and the facility for someone who's unable to get into County Hall to operate from home and and try and fold in a proper package that would in effect become maternity leave uh, so so that um, uh, elected members with very young children would not be debarred. Uh, it's an interesting area and, and thanks Tony for raising it. Um, I, I think the fact we're having this discussion shows we haven't really thought very much about it in the past but if we're going to be uh, an equal opportunities council perhaps it's about time we did start to try to put a package together. Thanks. Thank you, Madeline. Jo? Um, I would probably normally think about job sharing in quite a different way to how I would talk about maternity leave. I believe um, as a councillor you are entitled to maternity leave. I think Matt Phillips will be able to um, give the exact um, <coughs> information on that and we recently adjusted the constitution to include adoption leave as well because we do need to make sure that we are equal opportunities for all and that does include if a man adopts a child as well as if a woman gives birth to a child um, but job sharing I think is a really interesting and very important aspect to look at especially when we start thinking about cabinet responsibilities and the fact that those cabinet responsibilities are then basically a full time job and it might be more appropriate for two people to do that on a part time basis than one person as a full time cabinet holder. Um, so I think it's a really important area that we do start to have conversations about. Um, I believe there becomes all sorts of sticky things in terms of constitution, but I look forward to Matt elucidating on that. And um, and I think we should definitely be able to talk about these things. It's really important that we do start to talk about how we might make being a councillor more accessible for more people 
And that does mean acknowledging that there are different times of people's lives where they may not be able to engage in a full time job or it might be best to share responsibilities. So um, it is very useful that we start talking about these things. Thank you. Great, thank you, Jill. Matt? Thanks, Chair, and um, yeah, th thanks, Councillor Watkins, um, for for making reference to the Constitution, which was which was redrafted and amended and approved by Council back in March. So that does contain the um, revised and updated family leave policy that, that's applicable to all councillors. Broadly, please please don't hold me to this, but it brings the leave policies for councillors in line with with any other employee in, in the authority we expect in, in most organisations. So, yeah, a lot of that stuff around um, adoption leave and, and what have you is, is now covered within there. Um, I think probably just on a uh, slightly technical point re regarding the MP Stella Creasy, the um, the locum cover that was arranged there didn't allow for speaking parliament or voting is my understanding. So it was more of a, a locum decision made to have someone to kind of effectively front the constituency office and deal with constituents rather than being something that affected how voting and speaking or what ha ha happened, ha happened within, um, within the houses of parliament themselves. So the um, that's my second time I mentioned in the Local Government Elections Act uh, 2021 today. Again, this six month old piece of legislation, which is while it came out back in January, it's going through a, a number of um, implementing pieces of secondary legislation to bring in the, the different parts uh, of the legislation that there is a part in there that makes reference to job sharing. Um, so I think there's there's uh, forgive me, I'm doing this off the top of my head now. So I think there's reference to executive positions, as Councillor Watkins said. Um, I think, too, there's reference to some of the um, non-executive roles within a council, such as being chairs or vice chairs of either the council or the committee. Again, so I think picking up on Councillor Watkins' point there about there are some um, roles for elected members which have a, a kind of higher work um, burden on them um, it's in, in terms of council business anyway, as, as, as opposed to the burden of constituent business, which is which is a different thing. Um, so we we can expect to see additional regulations and guidance coming in, which will inform us uh, around some of those busier decisions, uh, busier uh, roles. Um, in terms of a broader job sharing ability uh, as a councillor per se, um, you're going to require some significant legislative change to bring that into effect because of course <clears throat> it, it raises a, the, the, the fairly knotty and varied questions as to well, when a member uh, uh, of the public votes for someone, how do they know that that's going to be the person representing them? How would you go about voting for potentially two people to job share a role? How would you deal with split vote? You know, we're into a whole world of election law, which sits away from, from my constitution. But um, but yeah, so there, there is the legal framework in place to at least um, start and continue this conversation um, in, exactly in the way that Councillor Eason has requested, I think. Thank you, Matt. Tony, do you want to come back in? Yeah, yes, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. And thank you, uh, Matt, for that. Yeah, on, on the basis of what you said, I, I presume that uh, Stella Creases was a pre private arrangement rather than a uh, legislative arrangement. Um, but yes, I, I think at least we've had a discussion on the topic. Um, I don't think councillors should leave it there. I don't think councillors in general should leave it there. Um, I don't know whether our committee could take it to the Welsh Local Government Association that we've raised the topic and see what response we get from them. I don't know whether that's within our power, within our gift, but um, OK, we, we had four or five responses and um, I'm pleased that uh, it, it's been a positive response and um, look forward to where we go in the future. Thank you, Chair. Right. Wendy, do you want to come in? No, no. no. All right, Wendy. Um, Matt, do you want to come back in on that, please? Yeah, so I think um, the way that the um, different elements of the Local Government Elections Act have been uh, implemented, they, they generally are preceded by a period of consultation and the ability to shape the, the guidance and, and regulations. So if if Chair, you're happy, and Councillor Easton, if you're happy, I'll take as an action to send a little bit more information on what 
uh, what the process is around that. And then if there's a um, a consultation period, then I would suggest then that that's the perfect vehicle um, for making those representations that Councillor Reeson's just um, just raised. Tony, are you happy with that response? Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, Chair. And sorry when I didn't have my camera on. Yes, thank you, Chair. Right. So uh, are the rest of the members happy that's the way we're going? Yes? Yes, Chair. I'm fine with that. Right. Thank you very much. Right. Um, introduction 2022. Introduction. Nicola's going to come in on that. Thank you, Chair. Um, members, as you know, this is now a standing item on the agenda for Democratic Services Committee and um, taking us up to the election. So attached to the agenda today is a draft timetable um, for discussion. So we're looking for opinions, really, um, and your thoughts on how it looks at the moment. It is very draft. Um, and we've obviously got to look at where we all slot the meetings in when they start back up as well. So a couple of things we need to just point out is that the first six to seven weeks of the um, council year, um, those weeks will have the essential training that we need to get done as soon as possible to start the meetings up. Um, so we're interested to know if you prefer full days training, so say training in the morning and then so say you could have planning training in the morning and then planning in the afternoon leading into that um, or whether you'd like more half day training um, but then that would probably be a lot of half days would you rather have full days training so there's a lot of things to, uh, to consider really. Um, just look at the look at the timetable attached and just give us your thoughts on it really. Um, I know in the uh, past uh, when we've had planning training, mm. we we have had the planning training in the morning and then gone into planning uh, meetings in the afternoon. And I think it might have happened on licensing as well. So, and, and it's worked quite well. I know it's a long day, but it's it get better to get it done in one day. And like it's just been said, two and a half days. So it, can I have your feelings on it, please? Open. Giles. 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 Yeah, thanks, Chair. I'll, I'll, I'll be brief. There's, there's two things in particular I, I, I want to raise, and one of them is, is a, I've got a bit of a tangent, uh, namely IT. And I think what I've found, and I don't know about other members, is as we've gone to the virtual meetings, and we'll have to have some degree of those in the future, regardless of COVID, for, for me, this this screen is, is too small and I think it would be nice to have a, a choice for members if they want to go with something like the Surface Pro, brilliant. Um, if not, it's difficult if you want to put any kind of text on there, even when you've got the chat bar open, it, you find yourself peering at the screen. And for example, now I've got my work computers on and I've got the agenda on one of those, which is a, a, a full width uh, monitor screen. So at least I can, I can read what's going on and the reports behind the discussion. The second thing I want to, to mention is that I understand that as much of the training needs to be done uh, as soon after the election as is humanly possible, but I don't think it necessarily reflects on the position of any working people that, that might be elected. Uh, and certainly in, last time round, I, I found the agenda was, was really tight and bearing in mind that, that, that Many people who are working may have had to have had um, time off work a couple of weeks, annual leave I've done in the past. In fact, I've had more than that and paid leave as well, just to make sure and get around enough houses. And having taken that leave, what you don't really want then is to be faced with the possibility of being elected and yet another week or two of constant meetings when you not only have you got to catch up with work, you've got to try and fit in that around uh, meetings that go on during the day. So what I would ask is please consider those people who are, are working and not yet members and how they might be, may be able to take part in that training because otherwise it's incredibly difficult. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Joe. Anybody else want to come in? A piece of job shit, didn't you? <laughs> Tony? No. no. T Tony? Hello? No chair. Oh, right, right. Anybody else want to come in? Joanne? 
thank you. Um, I looked at the timetable and I noted that quite a lot of the sessions are stated as being online and I thought that and that they would also be recorded so that they could be looked at um, at a member's convenience and I think that would be a great improvement on when we we had it for our induction five years ago, four and a half years ago. Um, and think that would be a good way to do that because then you can do them as Giles said, it is really difficult when you first become a councillor to try and juggle everything in. I wasn't expecting it when I when I became a councillor to suddenly have to try and find almost two full weeks of, of, of childcare actually was my big issue. I, I had a little one and I hadn't actually got any childcare lined up for that. So that was a really complicated juggling act for me um, for that particular um, induction period. So if we have got more opportunities for people to do it in their own time, because of recorded sessions. Yes, there are some that have to be in person. And I think it's also really important that there are some in person so that you get to meet your fellow councillors, you get to meet officers and you get to start building those personal relationships because an awful lot of being a councillor is to do with personal relationships. And we, we do know that we all benefit enormously from, from building up those as quickly as possible. But but yes, if we can have as many things that are done online of just the, of the boring nitty gritty ones that we all have to go through, the ones that we have to just, the, the detail, um, where you're all going through regulatory things. If we make sure as much of that as possible is um, accessible online as well for, for working people or people who have other commitments, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you, John. Matt, do you want to come in on that? Sorry, sorry, I'll take Sheila first. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I totally agree with what Giles and Joe just said, but something that struck me, New councillors, um, it's always difficult to get to know who, who officers are. I mean, we've got we've got this sheet now, which is helpful of, of some of the structures, but a directory will be essential. We've been, you know, we have a, I have asked for this before myself, and others have also, and in particular now with it, new councillors coming along, and we won't have the op they won't have the opportunity to meet officers possibly uh, for some time. With, with um, officers and members working from home, it's going to be so different. And I know that's going to be taken into consideration, but I do think having some sort of a, a directory to refer to, it's it's very challenging sometimes to find the right person. You don't want to be bothering people unnecessarily. Uh, and very often you email, in the early days, you, you might email the wrong officers. They do help you and, and refer you to the correct one, but that is going to be very important, I think, for new members. With, without the ability to meet people in, in County Hall as, as easily as we have done in the past. Um, the actual point Joe made about having sessions recorded, yes, that will be very, very helpful. We, we didn't have the opportunity to have all of the sessions recorded um, when we were first elected, and some of them were, but not all. I know we've, we've made um, great improvements on that now, and most things are LDP meetings, um, um, sessions, and seminars are recorded. So yes, I think as much as possible um, on the head for us all to be able to, to look at, it. we can all, all benefit from looking at those currently. So um, I think new members would find that particularly useful. Uh, the My Monmouthshire app is excellent. I think a lot more training um, needs to be given to new members on that and the, I find it particularly useful, but there are ways that that can be improved upon, which I've mentioned in, in the seminars and the digital seminar. But um, I think follow up, follow, you know, we, we get um, emails about them, but I think it'd be useful to have links uh, as to who to follow up with it when things, um, you know, aren't carried out as, as should be. But more often than not, the cases are closed and quite correctly. But my mum and have a lot more um, information on that. And also Mon Maps. I, I'm not, I haven't been able to um, make myself perhaps just personally as familiar with them as I, as I could do. I know they're very helpful, but I think that's something else that would be uh, useful to have a session on. Or is all about the getting to grips with the new, with the technology. We, we're all, um, you know, computer literate, but we come from, when you come from a different background and you've been dealing with different types of programs, it's, you've got to find your way around, you know, Monmouthshire's, which is, I'd say it's 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 proved very very helpful, and in this world of working from home and working remotely, it's going to be even more important. So good training is given at, on that front. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Jamie. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, just thanks for this for the timetable. It's um, <laughs> looking at it now, four and a half years in, as as Joe pointed out, it it's quite daunting the amount of uh, training that we need to undertake um, and information we need to take in. If I've said in the past that um, the first couple of weeks I will after my election, I was um, a rabbit in headlights and. I think this this timetable, if the final iteration of this timetable should, if we're going to um, bring in prospective candidates to talk through the role of um, being a councillor and the election process and stuff like that, this timetable should be given as part of the information pack so that um, they're aware in advance of the detail and, and the amount of training and information they need to take on board. I think that would be quite quite helpful because looking at it yeah. and the way it's spaced out is I think is is good. It's not as heavy as it was before, but it is still daunting. Um, so yeah, if that could be considered, that would be great. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Jim. Anybody else want to come in? I, I missed anybody at all. No. no. Right. Do you want to come in on that, Matt? Matt's left. He's oh, he's, he's left. He said he, he said he has to leave. Yeah. Right. We we'll take that on board, um, and Nick uh, will speak to John when he he comes back. Yeah. Um, and perhaps I will sit down with you, you Nicola, John, and. I'll ask the Vice Chairman, Jamie, to come in as well. Yes, yeah, sure. Right. Are you happy with that, Jamie? Yes, yeah, certainly, Dave. Yes, if, if I'm free, I'll um, I'll be available. I'm free? I forgot I was Vice Chair as well. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So if you're happy with that, uh, that's what uh, I'll arrange. Uh, so, uh, it's a convenient time for John and Nicola and uh, Jamie. Yeah. Cool. Right. Thank you very much. Right, the next one is the minutes of the previous meeting. Somebody approve them. I move, chair. I'll move them, Chair. Right, right. That's Jamie and uh, Marley. Yeah. Yeah. Right, thank you very much. Um, so that is the end of this meeting. Thank you for attending. I think it's been uh, worthwhile. Um, and I think there's quite a uh, good few views that come across, and we can put that hopefully in working or in working possession. So thank you very much, and uh, I'll see you at the next meeting. Thank you, thank Chair. You, Chair. Thanks, thank you. everybody. Bye, Take everyone. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you all. Down there.